So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically show you a feature in there that you're familiar with in Select Studio and how it works in, in Corel and Design Wizard. So I'm not gonna be doing any actual like designing in this. This is basically like um, a, uh, if you know this, then you will know that type of thing. Um, what I will go over in here is it's going to run a little bit based off of the assumption that you do use Select Studio fairly regularly. Um, I'm not gonna show you anything that's super advanced in Select Studio that you're gonna be over your head right away but I will assume that you know the modify panel, the offset panel, and a couple of different things like that. Um, so before I get started, one thing to note is this will be recorded and it will be um, on, on YouTube. Also, one thing is there is a book based off of this webinar. So I'm gonna do a quick review, but this book is gonna go a little bit more in depth. It has pictures and it has a bunch of stuff. Um, sorry you don't wanna pay 30 bucks for this book, I wrote it myself, but that's totally fine. So we do have this and this will come with the printed and ebook version, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So right here, we have a couple differences with Silhouette Studio and Corel Draw slash Design Wizard. So the first thing to just know off the bat with these with the with the two software is that Silhouette Studio was originally made for kind of like um, home crafting. Started off as like a big scrapbooking software, and it's for desktop home things like that. Um, Corel Draw is a full grade graphic design software. It is professional in the industry and you guys know from our industry with apparel and decals, it is actually the leader in what we do. Because Corel Draw is a full scale graphic design software, we can do more detailed editing and we can do it faster. Um, one thing between Silhouette Studio and uh, Design Wizard is that you can export your design from Corel into multiple file types. Now, one thing to note is Business Edition does allow you to save as an SVG file now. That is now a thing that you can do. However, um, Corel Draw does allow that as well as EPS, AI, and a ton of different other files as well. So that way, if you have um, Design Wizard, you can set it up. If you have a if you have like a CAMS machine, something like that, you can set it up in those files, no problem. And so, and then the biggest thing, and, and this is one of the biggest reasons that people move over as far as designing, is that rhinestone editing and designing is more expansive in the wizard. So a lot of times with rhinestones, you can do a lot with Silhouette, you guys know, with my, with my webinars, I do a lot of rhinestone stuff with it. But if you're doing a whole bunch of it and you wanna do a ton of editing, the wizard is a little bit better in that area. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna kind of start off with this area here. So I kind of have this divided into sections. Basically, um, I'm gonna build up through things that you're familiar with in Silhouette Studio and where it is in the wizard. So the first thing is we have the select tool. So the select tools are basically the same thing in both software. So you have it up here in the upper left corner of Silhouette Studio. And then in Corel Draw, you have it right here, okay? Pretty easy. Um, the difference between the two select tools is really as far as selecting shapes. Let's go ahead and draw a square in both software and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about, all right? So let's go back to Silhouette Studio. Now the way that Silhouette Studio works is that we have lines and shapes in here um, and then the fill matters. So right now this square is like just a line. You can't click on the inside and move it. You can see I, I can't do that. But if we go over to Corel Jaw, you can see I can go over to my select tool, click in the middle, and I can move it. So that's one difference that gets a little confusing between the two is that one of them you always have to fill it in. In Corel Jaw, you don't have to fill it in if you don't want to. Because remember, when we're working with our vinyl um, and our vector formats, it's basically we're just working with lines. The colors are for us, um, but really when we go to our cutter, it looks for the lines that we have in there. Um, and so one thing to note too, with Silhouette Studio, we're gonna talk about drawing shapes now. Whenever I draw a shape, so like this square, you'll see that we have this cur this crosshair here. So the crosshairs indicate that something's about to be drawn. The only difference between that and Corel Draw is that when you use that in here, it actually shows you the shape you are drawing. So if I'm drawing a rectangle, it has a rectangle next to it. If I'm drawing a circle, it'll have my circle next to it. Okay, so pretty easy, not, not a big deal. 
Now in Silhouette Studio, uh, we can do a symmetrical shape by holding down shift, right? So I'm holding down shift. We're gonna go ahead, click on here. You see that? Now in Corel Draw, we can do the same thing. The only difference is that we're gonna hold down control. So I'm holding down the control button. If I hold down shift, you can see it doesn't actually make it a perfect circle. So we're gonna go through and do control and you can see we had that in there. Hi, Suzanne and Jerry. All right, so let's go through. Let's do our select tool, delete these, and move on to the next point. Now, um, my favorite part of both software are making duplicates. So if you guys are familiar with my webinars, you know that I love my shortcuts with making a duplicate. So if you want to make a duplicate in uh, Silhouette Studio, what I typically do is I hover my mouse over it until it makes that, that little pointer finger, and you hold down the Alt button on your keyboard. Do you guys see that? The Alt button. So we can go through here and I'm gonna select the fill in the shape to make it a little bit easier. So then we have our Alt button, our mouse changes to a point a plus sign. We can go through and do that. Now with Corel Draw, we can go through and the thing that I love about it is I can draw my shape and I can use this and I'm gonna click and drag so we can see it's making a copy right here. We have that like that. And then wherever I want to place my duplicate, I can just click, right click, and now I have my duplicate really quickly. So my preference is I, in Corel Draw, I like clicking, dragging, and then right clicking to place my duplicate down. So the way that this is working, and I know this gets a little bit confusing for a lot of people too, is that when I'm doing this, I'm holding down the left button no matter what. So I'm gonna hold down the left button, drag it, my left button is still there, and then wherever I want to drop my duplicate, that is where I right click with the left click down and then let go of both. And there's my duplicate. Does that make sense, guys? One thing that I really like, so this is a little bit different than Silhouette, is I can draw a shape here. And let's say I wanna make a ton of copies at once, I can click and drag, and every place that I do the space bar, so I'm doing a space bar here, every spot that my shape is when I hit my space bar, it's gonna make a duplicate too. You guys see that? Yeah, I'm using a mouse. So I am using a normal mouse. Um, whenever you're doing designing in both software, I definitely recommend using a mouse, not the trackpad on a laptop, just cause it gets a little, gets a little crazy. All right. Cool, so that is basically the differences between the two and how you select things and how you make duplicates. Just with the space bar, Jerry, I'm doing the space bar if I'm doing multiples. So if I want to drag this down and make a whole bunch, when I click and drag, I'm just hitting the space bar while I move it and it drops a copy where my space bar is. If I'm just making one copy, then I just go through, click and right click and then it'll place a duplicate where I am. All right. Do you know if there are any cheat sheets for shortcuts in Corel? Um, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I know that there's stuff online, um, but I haven't done I haven't done too much with that. And then, if you're using Corel in the Wizard, um, you can send your project to your Silhouette Cutter. You just need to have Silhouette Connect to send directly to it, or you can save it as an SVG file and open it in Silhouette Studio, which is actually my preference. So let's go through, and I'm going to take some time to talk about the Modify panel. So. You guys let me know in the questions section, how often do you guys use the Modify panel? Would you say you're a beginner? Would you say you're intermediate? Or would you say you're a pro at the Modify panel? Let me know what you think. So intermediate, pro. So a, a fair amount of beginners as well. Pretty cool. Okay, so and a few in the middle. So I'm gonna go quickly through the Modify panel and uh, Corel Draw to show you the differences. So for me in my designing, I use the Modify panel all the time. I think that's kind of what takes your design from like drawing shapes and typing out things to really making it into a cohesive design. That's how you kind of like make your colors fit into each other and kind of add just cool features with that. So right here we have our modify panel. So the way I like to show the modify panel is I do a square and I do a circle. All right, so let's go through there. And I'm just gonna fill these in so you can see these better. 
All right, so we have that set. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a copy and have two here. And let's go over to Corel and do the same thing. So don't forget, I'm holding down Control to get that perfect shape instead of Shift like, like we're used to in Silhouette. So let's go through here, and I'm just going to use the colors over here for now. I know we can use the wizard, but I'm going to leave it like that. And then click, drag over, right click, now we have our copy. All right, so um, this is always going to stay the same so you can see the comparison. Oops. And then we're going to do our modify on this side. So we have our weld, gets rid of our overlapping shapes, control Z. Um, to do that in Corel Draw, when you install the TRW Design Wizard, then we also will install a toolbar. So right here, this right here, do you see my mouse towards the top? This is basically called um, the transform panel in the wizard or Corel and the wizard. So this is kind of what our modify panel is now. So if we want to do weld, we go right here, do weld, and now our shapes are all together. Now guys, I can't emphasize enough to you, when in doubt with these, so these programs, graphic design software, look at the pictures. Okay, pictures and the icons a lot of times indicate what the, the command is going to do, all right? And also when you hover over them, they explain it as well. All right, so we have our wealth. Now let's talk about subtract. So subtract takes your top shape and it subtracts it out of the bottom one. Think of it as like a big cookie cutter, all right? And so it's gonna take the circle and cut it out of the square right here. So let's go ahead, don't forget, my original is always gonna stay right here, and let's do subtract, all right? So you guys see that? So it took my circle, cut it out of the bottom shape. So the so one thing to note about a subtract is that it's gonna take everything on top from the very bottom shape. So if you've drawn four things in there, so you have a circle, a square, a triangle, another circle, when you do subtract, these three things that you made after this bottom one will be gone and it's only going to be this bottom one and whatever's taken out from it. So yeah, it's a lot like slicing it, someone asked. Um, it, I always say it's like a cookie cutter, you're like punching out of it. So we have that there. So I use subtract most often when I'm trying to do an offset around my text. So if I have, um, <coughs> excuse me, so if I have, um, you know, a box here and I do have text right here and I'm gonna do an offset real quick um, I'm gonna come back to that so if you haven't seen it don't worry about it so I would do subtract most often if I want to have space between two colors like this so I would create an offset around it so we have our offset and then I'm holding shift to grab this back one and then we would go over here to my modify panel and subtract it so this is what I use subtract the most for. It creates definition between your colors, and this also works if you want to have a one color design but have different sections to, uh, to it. It kind of takes it out like that. Does that make sense? All right, so over here in Corel Draw and the Wizard, if we want to do a subtract, basically um, that is what's called a back minus front in Corel. So go ahead, look at the pictures, right here back minus front so it's going to have a little icon of a square a uh, uh, solid square and then it's going to have a dotted square on top of it to indicate that that's going to be gone all right so let's go right here let's do back minus front and now we have the equivalent in our subtract here do the makers of chrome excel at studio no they're actually totally different developers but the good thing about um, Silhouette Studio and Corel Draw is that most graphic design software has a lot of similarities. It's just really a matter of like what the intended end purpose is and um, who makes it really, like how they want to get there. All right, so let's go ahead and go to subtract all. So this is really confusing when you first start. Like, what's the difference between subtract and subtract all? Okay, so. Basically, subtract, you saw what happened. It knocked out from the bottom shape and it got rid of the top one. Now, subtract all, the bottom shape always has the same result. It's, it's going to be cut. It's going to be cut by the top shape. The difference between subtract and subtract all is that the top shape will still remain. So that's what's really confusing about subtract all is that you think that nothing happened, but in reality, it did, just your top shape is still there. So let me talk about, let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's go right here, we had our subtract. Now if we do subtract all, 
cool. Like, it doesn't look like anything happened. But you can move that. You can see that this is knocked out here. So, subtract all is fine. I never use it personally. I always like just doing a plain subtract. Um, but it's really a matter of preference for you. So, if we go right here... And then if we want to do that in Corel and the wizard, then if we want to do subtract all, then that would be something called uh, a trim. Let me, so let's go right here. So trim, cut out a portion of an object by using the shape of another object. So we go right here, trim, check it out. Now that's been knocked out. So keep in mind, like remember, when you have a solid line in there, it means that the object's still there. A dotted line means the object's going to go away. So if you have two solid squares on top of each other, then both objects will be there so we can trim them and do that. All right, so I, and by the way, to go back, I'm just doing Control Z, and that's the same in both software, all right? Now let's go over here and talk about intersect. So intersect, um, basically when you have two objects that overlap, intersect is only the part of the objects that overlap remains so it's almost like the when you have a venn diagram with the two circles it's that middle part so let's go right here let's select both of these let's do intersect and now just that's there so we have that and let's go over to corral let's select both of these and so if we're going to do intersect we're going to go over and intersect now here's the difference between the two it made a new object there, but it kept those other ones there too. Do you see that? So you essentially have the same final result, but you don't at the same time because you have to delete those extra sections. All right. And now we have divide. So divide will take, so if we look at this, we have a square here and a circle here. So we have overlapping lines in there. So what it does is it's every spot that there's an overlapping line, it breaks it apart into a new object. So that sounds a little bit confusing. So let me just go ahead and click divide and show you. So let's go over to divide. And now we have three objects there, which is basically the same as intersect in, in um, Corel and the wizard. So to get that effect, we would literally do the same button we just did. We would just do our intersect. Oh, not trim. Oops. No, I got it. There we go. So we go right there and do that. Now, if you wanted it to be broken apart like this one, then you would have to combine a couple steps. So if you wanted to do this and break it apart, then you would just go through. Okay, so let's. You would have to go through and use this button right here. So combine. Um, how many of you have done um, Make Compound Path in Silhouette Studio? Tell me what you think of that function. Do you use it all the time or do you not know what I'm talking about when I say Make Compound Path? What do you think? The first few have all been using it, so that's good. And I love how some people... Some people are like, I use it, and instead of someone saying, no, I don't use it, they just did question mark. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. So let me go over and show you um, what's called wireframe view. So have you guys done the trick? So sometimes when you find want to figure out if you have overlapping lines, you can go to your send panel, and you can see the bold red line is what's going to cut, right? That's what's going to happen. Now, we have a function just like that in Corel where we can do wireframe view. So let's go right here. So I am over in my top toolbar towards the left, and we can do wireframe, all right? So what's happening is that we have two shapes here, but these are essentially all the lines that are going on. So basically, we are seeing only the lines, but when we're working in it, it's like we have two objects stacked on top of each other. So we're telling the software, hey, flatten these objects on top of each other. All these lines are working together to make one big object, okay? So if we go right here, if we do a combine, see what just happened? These lines are the same. Let's go to wireframe view. These lines are exactly the same, but you told the software, hey, there's a middle section. Basically, you're saying there's a middle section to this design. So go ahead and let's treat these lines as one object. It's almost like if you're looking at letters, like the letter O, you know, it has a line on the outside 
and a line on the inside, but we all know that that's just one shape, so there's a hole in it. So basically, long story short, when you wanna make something a compound path or combine something in Corel, you use this button here. And if you wanted to do this exact thing with the intersect, with the divide, I'm sorry, if you wanted to do this exact thing, then you would have to go through, make this a compound path, and smart fill these sections. So right here, let me go back because I did that really quickly, sorry. Right over here on this left toolbar, we have this little guy right here. It's called smart fill. So you can create objects from overlapping areas and apply a fill to those objects. So this will find the lines too. You can click here, click here, click here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I thought I hit the pick tool, but I didn't. And so now you have the same thing and you'll have to fill it in. So that's the one thing that Silhouette has an advantage over is that you can do that in one step. But I'll be totally honest, I can tell you maybe on one hand how many times I've used that, that button in the Modify panel, Divide. All right, so then we have one more feature to go over with the Modify panel. And for this one, I'm gonna change the example because I think it works better with a different example. So let's go right here and we're gonna talk about the Crop button. So let's go through, like we've done before, let's make our copies. And so just to straighten these out, I'm gonna use the align panel. So let's go over here to the right. We are going to uh, align them horizontally, look at the pictures, and then vertically. So this is gonna take the first object and the last object in the sequence and redistribute everything evenly. So we have that all set. And now I can take the circle and put it on top. So right click, bring to front, and we have that set right there. Now for crop, basically we would use this circle to crop our lines there to do a lot, you know, a circle of lines. So we're going to go over here, set this up, and now we're going to take all of these, go to modify, and crop. Okay? Does that make sense? Did you guys get that? So to do this in the wizard or Corel Draw is similar, but we're actually going to use a feature that we have already used. So let's go through. Don't forget what I said about the space bar. So I'm gonna click and drag. Space, 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 space. Here are all my copies. All right, so we have that all set. And now I'm just gonna go through and I use my align panel in the wizard. So we're gonna go through, do this middle one. And then right here, you can redistribute. So I'm gonna right click and that redistributed them vertically. All right, that's right here. So redistribute spacing, left click will redistribute it horizontally, right click will redistribute it vertically. Okay, so it's like the buttons in Silhouette, except you just right and left click on the same button. So let's go right here, let's make our circle bigger, and let's bring that to the front. So I'm using this button right here, this F, to bring that to the front. And again, if you're working in both software, a lot of these features are the same when you want to arrange things. You can just find the buttons that say front and back, or you can right click to change the order. So then if we want to do the crop as before, you're going to do something just like it, but you're going to use intersect again. So we're going to go over to intersect. Oops. So you want to go through, group these together, put that on top and use intersect. So the difference is that you have to move these out of the way, but it does have that there. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of the same, kind of not. Like you do have to do a couple more steps as far as these go, but I'll assure you a lot of times you don't use these as much as you do in Silhouette. Is there a manual for Design Wizard 4.0? Um, we don't have a written manual. We do have videos attached to every button. And so that's one thing I wanna backtrack to. If you guys are confused in the wizard, keep in mind that if you go to the wizard and right here at the top, do you see my mouse? I'm going to video tutorials. This is basically a clone of the wizard and each button is attached to a video that explains the feature. So no, we don't have a written manual, but we do have videos on each one. Written manual is something we would like to do. However, there are so many hangups with it. One, there's so many buttons and it'll take a really long time. And two, the features change so often that it's kind of like the book will be out, to date, out of date, you know? All right, 
So I'm going to talk a little bit. I The next section of what I'm going over, I kind of touched on already, but I'm going to expand on it a little bit more. So I'm going to talk about compound paths. All right. So in silhouette, compound path, it, and I like to use this the circles for an example. So let's go through it. I'm going to draw two circles and let's change the colors. So we're going to do, you know, a blue circle and we're going to do a pink circle. Okay. And I'm just going to take both of these, use this button here to align them. Okay. So right now we have two circles sitting on top of each other. It's like a stack of pancakes in a way. All right. So when we're looking at this, we see them as two objects and they're sitting on top. However, if we go to our send panel, we have these two lines right here. So in reality, if we cut this right here, we could still cut a, a ring there. But as far as doing our designing, we need to tell the software, hey, instead of having um, the instead of having two layers on top of it, I need you to just flatten them into one. So instead of having pancakes, it's almost like you're having a donut. Okay, so pancakes, they stack on top of each other. The donut, you have the circle knocked out of it. So if we go right here, we can take both of these and we're gonna right click, make compound path. So now we have a ring there. We can see that the fill is gone from the middle and we had that all set in there. All right, does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Now let me go over and tell me if it doesn't, I'll explain it again. So let's go over. And let's draw circles, send that to the back, and we're gonna fill this in with our wizard colors now. All right, so if we have our two circles here, almost looks like an eyeball. All right, so you see they're stacked on top. Now we can go and do the same feature and do the combine button. So combine is basically make compound path and do combine. So this is one step. Now I'll, and one thing that I want to emphasize too as well is especially with stuff like this there are more than there's more than one way to get somewhere so if you watch Matt's videos or Sean's videos they both would do this a different way so another way to do this is you could also do a smart fill so if you wanted this to just be a ring you could go right here click on smart fill go to your pick tool and move that to the side and now you have a ring made right there me personally I don't like doing that because I feel like it's more steps. I can just select it, click combine, and then be set. All right, so this is something that's really helpful. I like doing that. Um, I do it a lot if I have, like let's say I wanna do like little circle labels. So if I go right here and I do, you know, T, and I want that to be, I'm just gonna use this font manager, not the one in the wizard for right now. So if I went through and I wanted this to be T, and I wanted this to be cut out of this circle here, instead of like taking it and doing like a back minus front or doing a bunch of steps, I can go through and, and when we look at wireframe view, that's how I want it to be. I just need to flatten it into one object. I'm just gonna go through right here, combine, and now I have it all set right there. So one thing that I love about using combine is that, especially in Silhouette Studio more specifically, is Silhouette Studio is really picky about how many objects are in there. Now, CorelDRAW isn't as picky because it's a bigger software, but a lot of times when we're working with a bunch of stuff, um, it slows down the software because it thinks you have a ton of stuff in there. So I always try to combine things into a compound path as much as I can. Um, so that's one thing that I like to do with my fonts is after I've welded them if they're a script font, I combine them into a compound path to make them one big object. So whenever you have something that you need to break it apart, so let's say we have, you know, we're gonna have our circle here and then we're gonna do a whole bunch in here. Do, do, do. Like a, like a cheese moon or something. All right, so we have that set like this. And let's get this out of here. Actually, I'll leave that in there. So if we were in, went right here, if we filled it in, you can see they're all stacked on top. It's a bunch of circles on top. But we can go through, select all of that, right click, make compound path. Now we have this set like here. Let's say we need to break it apart. I wanna get rid of this little circle in here because I hate it. We can right click, release compound path, get rid of this little circle and then make it a compound path again. Now this is also something you would do is let's say you have a design from the Rhinestone world and you don't like part of it. You can also break it apart and take away a part of that. So to do something like that, so let's say we want to take this T out of here. I don't want that. We can right click, 
break curve apart and now we have them separated and check that out because I broke the curve apart this middle part's gone but it's still there it just needs to be combined into one object again so we can go right here combine and now we're all set with that does that make sense do you guys want me to repeat that and let me kind of show you an example of how that would be useful so let me go right here and let me do my TRW templates did it go over here mm, oh it's not in there so let me just move this over I'm gonna show you that crown that was just in Matt's live do you remember that crown and it was super detailed and Matt had a hard time with it <laughs> yeah he had a really hard time with that so I'm gonna show you practically how this works all right um, and honestly, Jessica, I don't even think that's a men thing. I just think that like, you know, maybe the file wasn't like checked enough. I, I'm not going to speculate, but all I know is that the, the file was a little detailed. Okay. So let me go through. Mine doesn't look as good. Obviously mine didn't carry through because I just downloaded the zip file because I wanted the crown. I didn't run the installer. So if you have this and you run the installer, these fonts will come in no problem. For me, I didn't do it. So mine just defaulted to something else. Okay. So check this out. Um, what installer? So when you download mini packs from us, there's a file type dot exe and basically you open it up and what it does is it installs all the fonts for you it categorizes your designs into the trw folder it creates on your computer and then you're all set to go okay so check this out so this right here um jessica it shouldn't but if you have like if it's con like if you have more concerns definitely give the call center an email because they know a little bit more than me all right, so we have this set right here. And I don't want this inside line. I just want this outside one. Do you guys see this? And so right here, we're gonna right click, break curve apart, check that out. Now, this is where we would use wireframe view. And so you can see all these lines are in there. So we can go through, click on this line, delete it. Oops. So we can see right here, we can take it, and if we want to get rid of this inside section, we can kind of go through, click on that line, delete it, click on that line, delete it. Now check this out. So if I go over here, let's combine it to check it out and see how it's already been simplified a little bit. Does that make sense? So this is something that I really like, and let's say I, I don't even want that inside line there. We can go through break curve apart. Let's go to our wireframe view. Click this little line here. Delete it. Click this little line here. Delete it. And then again, the lines are here. Do you guys understand how compound paths are working when I go back and forth to wireframe? So the lines are here. They're just, you know, flattened out. We'll go over to combine. And so now we have this thicker part here. Now, we, we would have to keep breaking it apart and fix these little sections in here, but let's say we wanted a more simplified version of this design. Not a big deal. We can go right, right through here. Let's break this curve apart. And let me just work on this bottom part for a second too. Does this help you guys or do you, are you over it? Do you want me to move on? Because I can totally just move on, but I know a lot of you guys, these are things that plague you. So with something like this, I just kind of click on the inside because I know that that's what you need. So don't forget with this design, it has like two inside lines. So I know that if I click on the inside, I can, the very inside one, that I can get rid of these. All right, so I'm not gonna do the whole, the whole thing, but you know, you, you get the idea of what I'm doing. Um, what was that? When you have both Wizard and Silhouette Business Edition, when would you use both? Honestly, okay. I like to use Business Edition um, to do, sometimes I like to start my rhinestone fills in Business Edition, save them as an SVG, and open them in um, Design Wizard. 
to be honest if when I need to do a lot of designing I'll do most of it in the wizard and then I still like to cut from silhouette studio so then I'll save it um, I can open a Corel file in business edition so I just save it as a Corel file and then open it up in silhouette studio cool so you guys ready to talk about offsets so how many of you use offsets in silhouette studio Guys, I'm probably going to go a little bit over. I hope that's okay. Yes, I am so glad the majority of you have said a lot all the time, constantly. Yes, yes, yes. Offsets are probably like the first or second most used part of designing, I think. Because that is how you get your, your definition and your shapes and all of that. You know, I love it. So I'm not gonna talk too much about offsets. I'm gonna make one quickly in Silhouette Studio and then I will um, show you this in the wizard. So what I just did is I just released Compound Path of that, deleted all the inside part and I have a circle already. So offset feature in Silhouette Studio, we can do offset or internal. So basically a line on the outside or the inside, we can select our distance. So the one benefit that Silhouette has over at the wizard is that we can have a live preview which is pretty cool. So we do that and then we hit apply and we've made our line around there. Now you guys have seen, and I clicked it a bunch of times, that's why there are three lines there. And you guys saw earlier when I showed the text, offsets are a huge thing. I love using offsets, so like let's say I did a label with this and I want it to be a little fancier, I can do two offsets. So I can do offset and I want this to be one, two, five, hit apply. Now the offset I just made is what's selected right now. So I can do offset again, hit apply, and then, so now, if we were to select both of these, I have two pancakes sitting on underneath there. You guys see that? But I want this to be a fancy circle with a ring, so I can select all of these, right click, make compound path, check it out. Now I have a fancy label, okay? So that's one example that I think offsets are super awesome and really easy to use and really just adds that little something to your designing. Um, I do that a lot with, um, with my texts. Um, Janita, yes and no. You wouldn't do that with offsets. You would do that with the replicate tool, which I have a video on. Um, I'm not gonna do it in this particular live. So okay, so let's go through. Let's do a circle to get started. Now, here's the difference with offsets and, um, uh, and what we call islands in Design Wizard. So this is, this is how we're doing it. Sorry, I get a little antsy, so I move a lot when I, when I do webinars. Now, offsets in the wizard are called islands and they are a part of the place and fill tab, which is what we use a lot for rhinestones. So let's go over to our place and film, film, fill. And so we have right here the islands angle. So this is something that you can also use with rhinestones. So let's go ahead and let's just go over a basic offset. So we wanna do an offset to the outside and right here, islands. So this is how many islands you're making. So it's what's cool about uh, Design Wizard is you can do multiple offsets at a time as opposed to one at a time in Silhouette. And then right here, what we would do if we just wanted one, we would do islands and we would do contour spacing. So basically an offset or an island is a contour cut around your shape. So if we wanna do contour spacing and we can do 0.125, which is just like what we just did in Silhouette Studio. And then we would go over here and do an island fill. You see that? Now the cool thing with Silhouette uh, Design Wizard is I can do multiple ones. So now I can say I wanna do two islands and let's say I want them, the first one to be one, two, five. So contour spacing basically means how far away is your first offset from your shape. And then fill line spacing means how far away are the lines that you make from each other. So if I want my fill line spacing to be, you know, I'll do 0.14. We can go over here. We have two islands to the outside. Do island fill. Check it out. So now we have two. So that process that I just did with the two rings, I can go through, do 0.125, do two islands. So now I have those set right there. I can select all of that here, do combine and then check it out. I've done that same thing that I did in Silhouette, but in a couple less steps. Now, one thing I wanna point out too, is when you're working in CorelDRAW, we have right here, 
These are our rhinestone colors and these are the vinyl colors. We also program our glitters in here too. So you can see that in there, all of our vinyl colors. I don't like using the line colors in Corel Draw. So if you ever want to get rid of your line color, see this X right here? We're just going to right click to clear the outline. And now we have just our color there. All right. When will the colors be updated? Jerry, we have a, a very large list that's, that our um, programmer is working on. So hopefully, hopefully soonish. Um, how do we use digital papers and patterns we have downloaded? So that's a good question. Um, with something like that, I don't know if we have a feature quite yet to um, program them into the wizard. What you could do is you could like grab your pattern. So um, let me get, let me see if I have just like, let me just grab a picture. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab this random picture. I know it's not a, I know it's not a pattern, but it gets, it gets the point across. So let's say you had a pattern, okay? So we can go through here. You know, I would just kind of bring your pattern to the back and use basically what we've done with the, the transformer modify panel and just go right there and do an intersect and kind of do that. So not, you know, totally programming. Um, I'm gonna write that down. Um, patterns in wizard because, and the reason why I'm writing this down is because if you notice, let me just delete this. We program our vinyl colors in here and you can go in and, and basically say how much you bought each color for so that when you do your pricing calculator, you can see how much your vinyl cost is in there. So I'm gonna write down a suggestion that maybe we can you can put in your own patterns and papers and stuff like that and whatever cost that went with that. So maybe that'll help you too. No promises, but I wrote it down to tell Matt. Okay. All right. And yeah, Jessica says her studio runs so slow because she has so many fonts and patterns. Yep, mine does that too. Um, so I that's kind of why I've been moving more towards the wizard as well. Um, so a lot of times with stuff like that, if I use a lot of patterns and files for um, my Silhouette Studio, I actually don't save them on my computer. I save them to a Google Drive folder that's kind of like linked to my computer. So it's actually pulling from that and not and not my computer. Okay, so I have a few more things to go over. Um, I'm just gonna go over the rhinestone panel very quickly because I know we're getting close to time. Um, do you guys have any questions on uh, islands, offsets, anything like that before I move on? Or anything that I've gone over? Hopefully it makes sense. There are less people who are actually caught saying stuff to me now. So I don't know if it's because I've bored you or it was like, ah, like too much. <laughs> okay, so let's go through and we're just going to talk about rhinestones No, uh, with that. And don't forget this is recorded, okay? So we're doing, we're doing a lot of stuff on here, so don't forget like this is not intended for you to kind of be an expert right away. That's a little bit why I talked about the book, that's why it's recorded. And I do have um, previous, I, I, I am planning on trying to do more webinars that focus on specific items in Silhouette to Corel. So we're going to get, Jessica, stop asking. Just just wait a couple minutes, okay? I'm winking. Um, so we're gonna go over specific things too. So if you guys like this, then we'll kind of go through there. All right, so let me go through, I'll talk about the book at the end. Um, so let's talk about rhinestones. So we have our rhinestone panel in Silhouette Studio. <laughs> I'm teasing you, Jessica. Um, in Silhouette Studio, we have our rhinestone panel. So how many of you have used the rhinestone panel in Silhouette Studio before? Or, let I mean, I like saying that. Rate your experience with the rhinestone panel. So we're just going to fill these in. <laughs> Libby, I didn't realize you were in the webinar. So uh, Libby, she teaches at a lot of stuff that I teach at too, and she says she's pretty darn good at the rhinestone panel. So we're gonna go quickly through here. 
all right? Keep in mind, I did actually do a, a webinar on the rhinestone panel a couple weeks ago. It is on our YouTube channel. You can check that out. Um, I'm not going to go too far into this. So we have our rhinestone effects, which basically mean our rhinestone fills. We can go right here. We can do our edge fill. This will take our line and convert it to rhinestones. Now it takes away the fill and the whole thing. Uh, so it's basically going to do a line of rhinestones. You don't want to do this if you want an outline around vinyl. That would be something that you would do a offset and then an edge fill. All right. And so the next one is we have linear fill that fills in your objects in a, in a grid fashion. Um, it doesn't work well for things that are curved. So see how it's curved up here? Doesn't work super great, but it works great for these hard lines here. Now the next one is radial fill. So this will fill from the outside in. So you can see with the circle, it has it like that. It's perfect for things that are curved, perfect for things that taper. Basically the difference is linear fill is going to kind of go and bulk fill it in. Your edges might be rough. The radial fill goes from the outside in, which means your edges and your outside is going to be very clearly defined, but the inside is not going to look super great sometimes. Let me see if I have the library. Um, Jessica, I do not have my own YouTube channel. I just do everything for the rhinestone world. So yes and no. I do, but I don't. All right, so let me just show you the two different fills here. So we have our edge fill here. Do, do, do. Oh, oh, I didn't trace this. Oh, this isn't traced. <laughs> Why did I do that? Let me see if I have one in here. Yeah, I do. I must have like saved it without thinking. All right, so we have our edge fill here. Now check it out. If we have our linear fill, you can see bulk, it looks good. But look at these, like the top parts, a little rough. These edges, not the best. But if we go over to radial fill, Look at the outside. Outside's looking real good. However, the inside, you'd have to do editing, okay? So that's kind of the basics with it. And then you have things where you can adjust your spacing right here, so how far apart your stones are. So 0 0.022, you know, I make them a little bit closer. And you can see it fixes some of it, but not all of it. So then we would have to go over to release rhinestones and kind of nudge it around, change it, that sort of thing. So check this out, so it's studio. There's so many in there. Release rhinestones. It froze. And then it it's all ungrouped. But look, my rhinestone panel like disappeared. And it's all set like that. Um, I'm doing a webinar. Someone's knocking on my door. <laughs> so we have that set like that. So we're going like... Sorry. I... <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I, I like never shut my door only when I'm doing videos or doing a webinar. So I'm like, that kind of confused me. All right, so we have this set right here. And so let's talk about rhinestones in, in the wizard, all right? And then this is gonna be the last thing I'll go over today. So let's go ahead and draw our shapes. Did you guys just hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, did you hear that? So, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, this is, uh, the best part is this wall. Uh, shares I share this wall with the warehouse where all the materials are so people don't realize that if they're on the other side of this wall I can hear them so normal work day I hear their music I can hear people singing in there um so someone must have been walking by and was just like that was happening so let's go through let's fill this in because I I think I'm supposed to be in a meeting right now and I think that's why they knocked on my door all right, so let's go right here and let's talk about the rhinestone panel. So right here, we have different formats in here. We already talked about our islands. So the cool thing about working with the rhinestone panel in the wizard is we can do an offset and convert it to rhinestones right away. We don't have to do a rhinestone, an offset and then go to the rhinestone panel. So the only difference is we would go right here, do add stones 
and then let's do our island fill. So check that out. Now our spacing's not super great. These are overlapping, but you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing right here. So whenever we do a line of rhinestones, we're gonna go over, let's go ahead and just do one island. Do our island fill. So we're all set like that. And then we can go over and check this out. So our rhinestones have a line going through them. Do you guys see that? So if we were to cut this right now, it's gonna cut a line through the whole thing. Our template's not gonna work, not super great. So we would just go right here, clear the path. So check this out. So now our line's gone and we're all set like that. So that's kind of the basic line fill. And then let's go over and talk about, let me just get rid of these little guys. Talk about the different fills. So the equivalent of the two fills that we have in Silhouette Studio is we have our hatch fill and we have our island fill. So right here, hatch fill is basically the same thing as linear fill. We would go right here, do hatch fill. And oh, let me go back and actually do a color that's gonna show up for you guys. Let's do this color. All right, so let's go, let's do our hatch fill. So check it out. So when you see this happen, you see how my lines are overlapping? The cool thing about the wizard is it knows how to do your spacing for you. So we're gonna do right here, automatic, automatic. So now I don't have to worry about telling them how far away to make the lines. It's gonna know, hey, I'm doing a rhinestone fill and I need these to work. So let's go over here, let's do hatch fill. And then we have that set right here. Now you can see we would need to do some editing, but a pretty good start. So let's go back. And then right here, we would do our island fill. So this is basically the same as a ra uh, the radial fill in Silhouette Studio. We would just do the inside and we would do, we would just get rid of that number for islands and then do our island fill. Oh. So I put in zero for islands and check that out. So now I have our radial fill all set. And then I would wanna do some editing. So let's go through here, let's clear the path. And then honestly, all I would really do is like move that. Okay, so pretty easy, not bad. Now there are more parts to it. Um, I'm not gonna go over that specifically today because I'm gonna do a rhinestone editing and both silhouette to Corel. Um, so with that being said, I'm just gonna talk about a couple things. So 